So today let's talk about stainless a little bit. This is a weld sample here that I did about a year ago. And on the bottom here I cleaned this with a passivation machine. On the top I did not. And just laying in my shop you see that the stainless, this is 308 stainless wire and this is stainless tubing just sitting in my shop with the moisture in the air, it's rusting. So what's happening with stainless is stainless when you weld it and you don't passivate it it loses a bunch of its stainless properties and it also loses strength like a buddy of mine made a tumbler machine out of stainless steel for some food product and where the tumbler was where the mounts were it like cracked out because it wasn't passivated so this is something that I learned fairly recently I don't do that much stainless but um, that on a side note I might make another video that's a little bit more involved with this so I cut some stuff on the plasma table yesterday this is gonna be a mount for a 3 inch pipe nipple schedule 40 that attaches onto a tube seven and a half inches diameter it comes off the plasma table like this with all the nasty and brown stuff and after grinding it looks something like this and you see that slot looks about sixty thousandths wide on the back side it looks about thirty that's a taper that you get on the cut with the plasma cutter if your, speed are, if your speeds are not set perfect then you see the corners I made a video on that the other day how how I clean the corners out in order to uh, make it bend and fold up easier so this is my 304 304 stainless 3 inch schedule 40 it'll fit right in here it's gonna get welded inside and outside the thing gets folded up and attaches to a pipe overhead kinda like this why all this fuzz because the customer provided this nipple and it wasn't long enough for me to have my machine shop guy mill the radius on it so rather than me cutting the hole through the pipe trying to fit this and then tick welding this all overhead this is all gonna be a a wire job here. So with the relief tabs here it should bend fairly easy. So that's about what it looks like all bent up the gaps open up a little bit here so I'm probably gonna wire weld this vertical down I will go in here with a cutoff wheel and just clean this out a little bit to make sure that there's none of that black nasty stuff from plasma cutting left and then weld it up insert the fitting and attach it to the pipe So that helped real good to take most of this gap up here. So the fit up is not perfect, but for sure it's good enough for wire welding. So let's see what this does. So wire welding works really good on stainless with pulse. Regular mixed stainless welding requires a trimix gas, where if you weld straight up spray arc, you can do this with a mixture of a really high argon content with a little bit of oxygen or a little bit of CO2 typically it's like a 98-2 mixture today we're using a 98-2 mixture the wire in the machine will be a regular 308L or 308LSI wire and um, let's see what we have to do to get this going so Right now there's aluminum wire in the machine. To switch this over to stainless you need a few things. For starters, you need a roll of stainless wire. 
What I have here is 035-308-LSI. Then you need a drive roll. Same drive roll you use for steel wire with a sharp V groove. Matching diameter. Side cutters. And then you need your 24 series gun. ER240 it says on here. If you can't read it, there. That's your regular steel, silicone bronze, um, stainless gun. And if you're worried about cross contamination, then either get a new liner or get another gun to switch this around. For this particular product, I'm not project, I'm not too worried. All right, we're at the machine now. We have our gas on the machine. Now if we go into the program menu, stainless steel 308 035 diameter argon with a balance of 2% CO2, so it's a 98.2, select. Now here we're selecting our material thickness we're welding on 14 gauge, which is about 083, so we'll have to be somewhere in this range here. I made a video previously on how to understand and interpret the synergic functions. Um, here, because there's a wider gap, I'm going to try to stay on the lower end of this and see how this works out for me. Then um, this is my run-in speed for crisp start, crisp start, so I don't have machine gunning. Uh, this is my pinch on the end to not leave a ball on there. Uh, slope down timer we don't need. This is a crater fill function for aluminum. My pre-gas flow, I'm going to bump this just a little bit. And then my post-gas flow, I'm going to set really high on stainless to shield the fresh weld from the ambient air. So for better gas coverage, I switched to a cylindrical nozzle. I got the matching size contact tip in here, ground clamp on the table, and yes, textbook says put it right on the part. I'm going to put the part on the vise so I can uh, hopefully do an arc shot so my ground clamp is not in my way.
show up on camera. Okay. Yeah, virtually spatter free. Nice speed appearance. 